And so he recorded the video for the final episode of Amy and Rory on Doctor Who, and then the video received one million views! And welcome to episode 75 of Discovering Doctor Who. I, I think I'm pretty sure I said this at episode 50, but oh my god, I cannot believe that I'm at 75 episodes already. But I'm not here to talk about the number of episodes. I'm here to talk about The Angels Take Manhattan, Amy and Rory's final episode in the Doctor, in the doctor Who series. And, uh, well, let's get right into it with my favorite parts of this episode, starting with The Angels, mostly. I'll get onto that a little bit more later. But... I, I'm honestly, every time the angels return, I've been excited because, uh, with few exceptions, the angels are probably one of the most, or rather, one of the scariest enemies that has been in Doctor Who by far, um, because they're very unpredictable. Well, they're predictable to a point, uh, based on, you know, how they work, for the most part, but... You just never entirely know exactly what's going to happen, especially after the second time we saw them, which in which they uh, they didn't t send people back in time, but rather they like physically killed them, which you know is something you might have noticed if you watched the reaction video from before. I had a few things like I was asking why isn't the angel sending her back in time by touching her. I actually forgot while watching about the whole they like just touching them doesn't send them back in time deal. So I apologize for that, but yeah, overall. I just absolutely love the Weeping Angels, and oh my god, the cherubs? Oh, those little cherub things were terrifying! And the giggles, and the little pitter-patter of the feet, ah! <laughs> and then the, um, uh, I don't know if they actually named what they were, but the uh, little boy and the woman statue that, uh, you know, obviously had been possessed or whatever by the Weeping Angels, however that works. Um, that was creepy, especially once they finally got in the house. That was just a moment of, ah, pure terror. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Now, moving on, my second favorite part of this episode were the parallels with the novel, at least early on. I just found it to be a, a, a really cool uh, element of the story that while things were actually going on, or the way that they realized that Rory or something had happened to Rory, was when the doctor read the segment of the book that is actually talking about Rory, or the skinny the skinny guy, or the skinny man, whatever he was referred to in the book, as in the book. But yeah, just like those parallels, I just found really interesting. And then the aspect of, you know, the doctor telling Amy to stop, you know, don't keep reading otherwise, you know, well, it's something I'm going to comment on a little bit later, you know, the whole reading sets fixed points in time or whatever, but as an idea, I find it really interesting, and again, just like, you know, the parallels with the story overall coming from the novel, I just thought was a well-utilized aspect of this story. Now, moving on, my third favorite part of the episode, the sacrifice and the paradox. And I, I guess I should, I could have named that uh, a lot better, but I just kind of like the way that sounded, but the way that Rory is going to sacrifice himself to create the paradox and therefore destroy the angels. And then both, or rather, Amy gets up there with him and won't let him do it unless she goes with him. So either both of them sacrifice their lives to create the paradox or neither of them does. And, oh, that was just such a great part of the episode. I can't remember if in the in the reaction video if I had much of a reaction to that part, but like I do remember inside I was just kind of like, Oh my God! Are, is this how is this how they go out? Do they kill themselves? I just oh that that segment right there just it blew me away really, and it was a beautiful segment compounded by the music. But anyway, my fourth favorite part of this episode, Raggedy Man, goodbye. That entire end segment 
where all of a sudden the the lone angel appears and sends Rory back in time. The back and forth with Amy and the Doctor, well, and River. And then the goodbye and she's gone. Just, it, I, I didn't expect it. Like, I literally thought that the episode was, ah, oh, we finally get a chance to breathe and everything is okay. No! Um, I said it's my a favorite part because of just how much it made me react, how I reacted to it. I will not say that that's a favorite of mine in regards to a companion having to leave because I, I pretty much always, like, the only companion that's left that I didn't feel just, like, you know, completely torn apart over was Martha, and that's because Martha left on her own accord. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, that, that segment right there, goodbye, a raggedy man, goodbye. It's a really powerful, strangely wonderful segment. And then finally, fifth and final favorite part of this episode, it's not even technically part of the episode, P.S. The mini-sode or webisode, whatever you want to call it, that was never actually filmed, but they did at least take the storyboard and a voiceover that was recorded by Arthur Darvel, uh, Rory, obviously, and oh my god, that, that segment right there was just phenomenal. Just being the storyboard with his voiceover, I mean, it, again, if you saw the reaction video, I was tearing up big time. Like, had it lasted much longer, I definitely would have just been bawling. <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, oof. P.S., I would venture to say, I actually kind of think P.S. could have been better than the episode as a whole. Just in terms of impact and the, the feels it gives you. And I just activated my Sonic. <laughs> but yeah, just that was... If you haven't actually seen that before, I highly recommend you go check it out. You can find it on YouTube very easily. I might even provide a link to it. Uh, either here in the annotations or down in the description. One or the other, if you haven't seen this short, I recommend you go check it out. But alright, now that we're done with my favorite parts of the episode, it's time to move on to my annoyances. And I'm interested to see what you all think about these annoyances because, uh, I don't know, to a degree I feel like all of these were pretty significant and they affected the viewing experience. When I was thinking about it afterward, and to a degree while I was watching. But uh, anyway, I'll get right into them. Starting with number one, my first annoyance was the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I know they were going for this, you know, wouldn't that be cool idea, but it's, th there's a few things <laughs> wrong with that. Like very, very wrong with that idea. First of all, you're telling me that in all of Manhattan, in all of Manhattan, all of New York, not a single person, not a single person, sees the Statue of Liberty no longer on Ellis Island, but in Manhattan. No one sees that except for the people on the building. No. Just, just no. And secondly, okay, it would be one thing if the Statue of Liberty disappeared from Ellis Island and then all of a sudden appeared at the building. That, if they did that, I might have given it a pass. However, that's not how it worked. No, we get these stomping sounds, we get these crunching sounds, implying, therefore, that the Statue of Liberty is walking. And if it is actually walking, that further compounds my first issue, which is, no one sees it? And also, <laughs> it just... The speed at which the angels are supposed to move does not imply stepping at all. And if it, even if it was stepping, you wouldn't be able to hear it because it moves that fast. Or you would, it's like instead of boom, 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 it would be more like boom, 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 boom. I mean, yeah, I just, uh, again, I know they were going for the whole wouldn't it be cool if aspect of it, but no, it was really, really dumb and something that just should have been left out entirely or done way, way better than it was. But okay, enough ranting about that. Time for my second annoyance with this episode. And it was that 
it had a the, the episode had a very frantic pace, and it it was actually honestly kind of exhausting. Now there have been other episodes that you know it's, it's had a very frantic pace. It's been really fast paced, and uh, you know it worked for those, and to a degree it does work for this episode. The problem is, especially with this being the final episode for Amy and Rory, we're given like we're given a little bit of time at the beginning and then a little bit of time at the end to just sort of relax. Of course, it's before anything's going on and then after everything has already occurred. But in the middle, we're not really given any time to just breathe. It's like something is always going on and always going on and it just like I said, it just gets to a point where it's really exhausting as a viewer, and I wasn't, that kept me from being able to fully enjoy, or, well, uh, fully get enwrapped in the, you know, their finale episode, uh, which I, I don't know, maybe if the episode had been stretched out a little bit longer, it could have helped, and again, it may just be a personal issue for me, other people may not find it to have been frantic and exhausting at all, but for me, I did find it that way. All right, now for my third annoyance with this episode, and this is actually a callback to the whole parallels with the book and the story. You can't change the past after you read about it. There's... I, I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, but that is so strange to even partially consider um, within the confines of this show's logic. Which I know the logic is pretty, you know, it can be stretched quite a bit. But you're telling me that once they've read in a book, or in this specific book, that something is going to occur, that it's going to have to occur no matter what. Doesn't that rule also apply to every history book ever made? Every story ever written about specific historical events? Wouldn't that mean that technically the doctor shouldn't be able to go anywhere that a book has been written about or that history has been written about doesn't wouldn't that mean that he wouldn't be able to change anything i mean we get the idea that there are fixed points in time which is wibbly wobbly to say the least but i don't know just the whole logic behind that idea of uh you can't change the past after you or you can't that you, you can't change what's going to happen after you've read about it. I think I must have written that down wrong, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, just the logic there... I get it to a point, but it's... Uh, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, my fourth and final annoyance with this episode is that P.S. should have been filmed. It should have been filmed. I know I've, uh, it's been mentioned in comments and I've read online that it was because of scheduling uh, problems and, you know, other things, this and that, possibly even something to do with the budget. But it should have been filmed in some way. It didn't have to be anything big budget. All you needed was Michael Williams as uh, Brian Williams, uh, is someone dressed up as Amy and Rory's son, which isn't... I mean, we get an idea of what he looks like from the drawings, but we don't have anything set in stone. I don't know, it's just, it should have been filmed, because it would have made the end so much better. Now, I, I still think that it should have ended the way it did, technically, with, you know, the tar you hear the TARDIS sound and little Amelia looking up right there at the end. I thought that was a good way to end the episode, but... They should have had it as an after credits or like just like sort of in the middle of the credits somewhere in there, just that extra scene, and it would have made the episode perfect. It would have been something that made me forgive all the annoyances I had with the episode as a whole. But they didn't, and it's a, it's a separate entity that unfortunately, while the voiceover was recorded, the scene itself was never filmed. And I just find that, I find that really sad. <laughs> But all right, uh, moving on from there, I'll be getting to my overall thoughts on this episode soon. Time to talk about the track of the episode. And uh, I basically, I knew what song I wanted it to be, or I knew what track I wanted it to be, but I, you know, I couldn't figure out the name. So I went online, went through the uh, soundtrack, you know, song by song, finally found the one I was looking for. And it's the music that plays in the background when Amy and Rory essentially are 
you know, they, they sacrifice themselves to create the paradox. Change the future, it's called marriage. <laughs> but the track is actually called Together or Not at All, The Song of Amy and Rory. Gorgeous song. Absolutely gorgeous. That has to be easily one of the absolute best songs that I've heard overall in Doctor Who so far. Um, I'd have to go through, like, you know, all of the tracks of the show, which would take forever to really get a solid top five, but I would, I would honestly say that this song falls into the top five for me, bar none. All right, and then finally, the quote of the episode, and it's actually, I'm sp <laughs> it's two quotes overall, and I'm not going to read them because I would not be able to do them any justice, and it would be very, very long to do, but... The two, the, the, two, the two quotes of the episode are Amy's afterward and Rory's letter. So, you know, obviously Amy's afterward at the end of the episode and then Rory's letter from P.S. Such... I will say that Rory's uh, hit me a bit harder overall because during Amy's afterward I was still kind of coming down from what all had happened, uh, you know, there just beforehand. But yeah, both of them were just, they were really well done, very well read, and, I mean, apparently while, um, Amy, or, or I'm sorry, while, while Karen Gillan was uh, recording her line, uh, her and Matt Smith were side by side, and, uh, yeah, after she finished reading, like, Matt Smith apparently, like, just broke down crying, which I can't blame him, especially if that's someone you come to know, come to love as a friend, it's like you've been working with them for so long, and then just, you know, it's kind of over at that point. Although I don't think this was the last episode they recorded together. I, I don't know, there's <laughs> behind-the-scenes, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. But, uh, yeah, just both of those were just perfect, and there's no way I could have judged one or the, over, one or the other overall. So they are both the quotes of the episode. Uh, and now, my overall thoughts on this episode. And I'm going to be completely honest. I am so torn on this episode. On one hand, it was really good. It hit the emotional parts for me very well. It was an intense story, while exhausting at times, it was an intense story. Um, I found it to be a wonderful little farewell for Amy and Rory uh, as a, overall. But at the same time, the annoyances really, really annoyed me. Uh, even while, you know, I, I commented on some of them during the reaction video, and, you know, they kind of annoyed me even more afterward while I started to think about everything. But, yeah, it's just like there, there were some major annoyances that bring down an overall really good story. And the, again, had, it, had, had they recorded PS and it actually been a part of this episode, I, I would have forgiven the annoyances as a whole. But the fact that it does exist does help my thoughts on the episode overall as a whole. Wow, I'm rambling right now. But, but basically, for this episode, I think it's really good. Um, I would say it's overall probably the best of seasons, the season so far. Um, or, well, the best of season 7A, if you want to call it that, or the first half of season 7. But it does still have some significant issues that I, it, I just can't look over. But despite those, I do like the episode as a whole. Again, with it being my favorite of the season so far. Now, um, moving on from there, I do have a question for you all that will lead into the next video that will hopefully come out on Friday. And that is, what was your favorite episode of season 7A, or the first half of season 7. Um, and for those of you that have actually, well, most of you have actually seen, seen seen season 7 before, and you might have watched it again to go along with this show, let me know what, uh, you know, did you have a different opinion of the episodes the first time as, to, uh, as opposed to now, when you've watched them a second time? Because I, I've seen a few people already comment on some of the previous episodes of this season, saying that they used to hate them, but now they like it quite a bit. So yeah, I'm really interested to see what uh, was your, or what is your favorite episode of the first half of season seven. 
And, you know, as always, please do let me know your uh, favorite parts of this episode, any annoyances you might have had, your favorite track, if it differs from Together or Not at All, which, but personally, I don't know why you would have a different one, because it was the best song of the episode, in, in my opinion. <laughs> and then also, of course, if you have a quote that you find to be overall better than the afterword and the letter, please do let me know, because, you know, I always like to hear the, what you have to say, and I love the discussions that occur. But all right, everyone, uh, thank you very much for joining me for, again, episode 75 of Discovering Doctor Who. And here at the end, I'm also going to show you another little bit of fan art that I received. It's from Whovian305, and uh, you might, uh, I think her nickname used to be Tiger Blood or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, it's this really adorable picture of my cat, Midna. And it's, it's absolutely adorable. I, I love it. My wife loves it. And I'm sure Midna would love it too if she had any actual concept of what she was looking at. <laughs> but all right. Again, Hoofian305, thank you so much for that picture. It's adorable and I love it. And all of you, I will see you next time on the next Discovering Doctor Who for the Season 7A Recap. And until then, Alonzi! Papa Ken recorded a video review for the Angels Take Manhattan for his Discovering Doctor Who series, and the video received one million views! <laughs>